Hello, my wonderful and beautiful family. Yes, it's a family affair. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on into the house, okay? At this time, y'all should have been on eight. Done, got you a nice drink in your hand. Hopefully, you don't took your bath for the night. So, when I finish this video, y'all can go on and go to sleep. Such as, which I will be doing after probably putting out another video. Hopefully, I'll be in the bed by 12 midnight or 11.30 something, sometime around that. But, yes, we're back in the house. How were your day? Everybody, my lovely ladies and my little uh, handsome gentlemen. What have y'all been doing today and did you make it through that Monday? Woo, Lord. That's a hard time coming off being off on the weekend, ain't it, guys? I know it is because, whoo, I don't know. It's like I got arthritis in my back or something. How y'all doing with y'all help? If y'all ain't doing so well, then y'all need to engage in going to see your doctor about your medical histories and stuff of that nature. It's Heart Awareness Month, so y'all going to get those cholesterol checked. Y'all uh, eat right, eat more baked foods. Hell, I've been cooking with, um, what do you call it? My doctor told me, uh, even though I'm taking cholesterol medicine, I need to be taking, uh, well, cooking with, uh, what is it, virgin olive oil? The extra fine or light or something like that. And it didn't really taste bad, y'all. It really didn't. I don't eat butter. I even eat margarine. But, you know, it just is what it is. So, I got to exercise a little bit more. I know I've been saying that. And I've been boring it like the plague. But, I have been trying to eat right. So, that's half the battle. When you got your eating on task, exercise is just to keep it off and maintain. So, I understand uh, about that and I ain't gonna bother you too much about your health either because it's a struggle every day but each day we do a little something different to better our health that's uh, amazing so keep that in mind if you're struggling with your weight or any other health problems you can do it just put your mind to it and if you need me to come over uh, just come over to the house drop a comment say you know pray for me or definitely uh, uh, motivate me Dale <laughs> Girl, you know I'll be there. I'll be there. Come on, everybody sing. We'll be there for each other. Because we are family affair. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, family. I'm glad y'all in the house with me tonight. But I want to shout out some of my family members that wanted to drop by uh, for a couple of minutes or so. Drop down in them comments. Told me what they felt about subject matter. And I was like, all right then. Good God. Y'all was really on point with some of y'all stuff. Y'all was a matter of factly and put the exclamation points all down there. I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, y'all have some strong opinions. Especially my uh, brother Timothy Tahari Harris. Yes, Lord. <laughs> He's coming to steal. There, go check it out. He was very opinionated. Then we had um, Shirley James as well as Carlina Randall. They were matter of factly on some of this stuff that uh, we had put out there for the family to partake of. But welcome, welcome, welcome. Love on you. Love on me back. Glad to have you in the comments. Um, speaking out your mind and we're going to say a welcome a warm welcome to Pinsley Francis Karen Rimmer J. Mack P.M. Patricia Kaysen uh, Esther Ferris Marcia Appleton and Theresa Dorsey welcome family members welcome okay and continue to keep coming back and speaking your mind on subject matter okay and I know sometimes y'all want to get me straight but here do it in a nice way okay because I don't want to lose my family you know but you can tell who family and who not because some of them can't take the pressure they just got to go all willy nilly and just go on instead of knowing we family we ain't going to say everything kosher and, and, and up right half the time but we allow each other to have each other's opinions and we don't try to trample on other people's opinions about subject matter because everybody's opinion is uh, important is hell is important to them that's why they put it down now so we stress that over here be respectful to, towards other people's opinions and their perspectives of how they view things okay but as you know we're going to be talking about Candy Burris tonight she did her speak on it 
and her re- rendition or review of what happened on the Real Housewives of Atlanta Sunday that was called Lions, Tigers, and Shade, okay? And again, she's acting fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent as well because everything she said, and I damn sure listen to everything she said, she didn't put herself in there really. It was like, ah, oh, these are some fake people these are some fake friendships this is a fake sisterhood but candy what part did you play in any of that huh that's what i'm trying to get i mean i could be called a spade some days you know what i'm saying some people say i'm biased you know but i tell them everybody can get it it just depends on what day it is what you did that day to upset me or make me want to speak on it or speak my mind and my peace on it how my parents used to say speak my peace okay so you know that's what i'm saying everybody has a time where they falling short you know what i'm saying they ain't coming up kosher i can say i've been in that frame of mind sometimes you know and i'll probably do it later on <laughs> probably also in this video you just don't know but candy never puts herself in the scenario and that's what pisses me off with her okay she can see everybody else's flaws and recognize it but when somebody throw it back at her she want to catch your attitude don't catch no attitude can just listen to what the vloggers and the content creators are saying to you to hopefully you understand where we're coming from and just look in the mirror baby just look in the mirror and see does any of those sharp arrows we're throwing at you are any of them penetrating because it seems like they are hitting you on your back on your head on your butt you know wherever in your arm but you ain't paying attention to them you ain't paying attention to what we're trying to tell you how your escape group tried to tell you about your ways and you ain't want to listen to them you ain't want to put them on your platform you like the hell with them and you know you moving on i'm like candy how can you learn and grow baby how can you learn and grow but we're gonna get on into her review we're gonna start with that one point which uh candy's chasing uh, you know, she's still chasing and shading Kenya about how Kenya was shading Cynthia. Now, I'm like, can we have a conversation? Let's have a conversation on this situation. How are you going to sit up there on your platform, which is speak on it, talk about sisterhood and all the things coming and going that you see your two besties, meaning Cynthia and Kenya, are going at it, doing each other unfair, throwing each other on the bus, but yet you don't say nothing about it when we're watching the show. That's why I have a problem with you, Candy. You see women be doing uh, evil and conniving type shit, especially uh, Cynthia where she go in between, you know, talking about the candy lady. Uh, I mean the candy lady, but the cookie lady, um, and, and trying to express herself about Tanya. Then she go and tell Tanya about what Kenya and the cookie lady were talking about. You know, it's all confusing, but yet you're still in the midst of it, see? But you don't see, and you don't want to call your so-called friends. Are you friends with anybody on the show, Candy? Let us know. Hell, Deb Chanel's family want to know over here at Deb Chanel's 48th World. We want to know, are you friends, or do you have solid friendships with any of the women? Because I was surprised to see it, hear you talking about Kenya and Cynthia in the same topic group of them being shady. I'm like, do they know you're talking about them, Candy? <laughs> Girl, do they know? Because you ain't going to tote the bone on yourself. You ain't going to go and say, yeah, I was talking about y'all with the other group of women. No, that's something you don't do. It's something I guess they have to see after the show has aired. But girl, you funny. Okay, we're going to move on to your second point. Uh, you're talking about, and they're also showing clips about Nene talking bad about Cynthia on Watch What Happened to Lives. Then we got another clip where Cynthia is talking about Nene uh, on Watch, Watch What Happened to Lives, getting her rendition of what was going on. Now, no, this was like two or three years ago. They pulling these clips from. And Candace just saying, you no, know, both of them are fake. And you trying to show, you know, Show us on the platform how really or how they aren't shading each other. Yes, Candy. You sit up there saying Nene. And um, Cynthia really don't have a friendship. They have a fake friendship. Because they always fight. They always throwing each other on the bus. This, that, and the third. Just like you said, Cynthia and Kenny was doing that. You're saying 
uh, Kenya and I'm not Kenya but uh, Nene and uh, Cynthia are throwing each other under the bus but you recognize this aren't you friends with them can't you be like a little mediator or monitor like Marlo Hampton can't you not straighten these women out or do you just like seeing discord just as long as you're not involved in it you want to look at a spade you want to call a spade out but you ain't looking to see how you can fix the situation you just on the back burner just want to talk about the shit now how fake and fraudulent is that candy okay but you hollering about this sisterhood don't seem like you too much of a big sister in this at all either so when you're calling a spade a spade move yourself on into that house because y'all a card of spades running around now you remember you were hooked up with phaedra you went to her graduation saw her graduate from mortuary school and y'all was you know good 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 but once you sided with apollo because um todd was hanging out cool and tough with apollo that's when your relationship with phaedra started to fall apart okay whether you want to recognize it we recognize it and we saw where the riff was coming from but you kind of threw her, her up under the bus yes you did yeah candy you did but you don't see your part you played in that either right leaving phaedra out there to dry so of course she's gonna turn tricks on you same thing gonna happen with you and kenya you keep smiling her face you keep i mean are you gathering like a little assassin around there you gathering intel on kenya to bring her down one day maybe she don't talk bad about andy Cohen or any other of the executives over there and she's just biding her time so she could stab you in the back kenya i don't know honey and then you know you and tiny were fussing about who wrote this uh song for tlc <laughs> you remember no scrubs honey because hell i thought tiny wrote it then it come out you wrote i mean just go back and forth i don't seem like you have any uh longevity with friends because you definitely show them put them on your show now um tiny put you on the show a couple of times or whatnot and maybe um Tiny had a little guest cameo with you going out there to talk with uh, and on Watch What Happens Live and stuff. Because he really, they really, truly wanted Tiny on the show. That's who they really were. Because they probably trying to get the T.I. and all that salacious stuff going on. Because he's a little bit more exciting than your husband, Todd Tucker. Or you didn't have him at the time, but you were trying to get and meet and greet him and uh, pretty much lasso him for the big come up of him being your husband okay and that was part of phaedra phaedra hooked that up for you but yet you can't stand the ground she walk on but yet you're gonna make an ideal of a tour to have a dungeon going on and making money off that uh defamation of character she was trying to taint your name and did we remember how you and the scott sisters fell out y'all tried to get a little thing going on then you was over there speak on it uh trying to be with kiki palmer on their little show sarah uh michael and uh nancy the kiki show you tried to go over there and uh solidify yourself as a little host on that particular show because you guest co-host but uh, it was a job opening coming up but they gave it to kiki ponder palmer not you candace okay i see i see you girl and i don't too much like that shirt you got on because that's kind of blaspheming honey we just know the lord is upstairs and we're downstairs okay he's in a heavenly realm but like i said i don't know what god you serve these days okay we not we may not be serving the same lord okay uh i call my god lord you call your god god so i, I Oh, you know play on words but actions speak louder than words and candy you sounding like a true fake and fraudulent friend so basically are you telling us that basically the friendship that y'all so-called have on the show is fictitious is that what you're really trying to tell us candy between the lines because you sure you made a strong definition of what friendship was and friendship you can't claim on none of the ladies on the real housewives of atlanta that's what i got from it i don't know if anybody else sees it the way i do because my family we all smart over here we don't act the same and we don't move the same you know what I'm saying? Everybody have their own mind. They very in individualist, uh, listic when it comes to their opinions and how they want to express themselves. You know, but they very respectful. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta going on over here, okay? But like I said, we don't never see Rashida 
and you out is that something she got from tags that skirt kind of looked like the one riley was trying to put on we know you ain't cool with the scott sisters even though you say you are but your action speaks louder than the words and the only person i know that could get you together is mama joyce and tiny harris okay them are the only two that i can see that would tear you to pieces if you came off the wrong way so you flow around with toya and all these other people but i I don't think you can be a real friend of them either i don't know can i think you're a, a woman an island on a woman women you are you a woman on an island by herself but that's just my thoughts my thoughts and then you start talking about girl code you ain't never seen how nene and cynthia go at each other and they just screw all their uh, when they get mad at each other, they just spur all their um, knowledge of each other that should be kept behind closed doors. You said they just be spraying it for everybody here. Now, what kind of friends is that? It should be a girl code where y'all just don't go, you know, on television or any type of network that want to do interviews with you all and talk nasty about each other. That what you said, Cam? That what you said? But then you do the same thing to fade your paws. Because y'all were bosom buddies at one time, but you did a lot of interviews on fade your Park and how she was trying to bring you down, girl. Mm -mm. Yeah, honey, she did hers in front of us. You be doing shit in the dark, okay? But that's just how you work sometimes, Candy, because I be watching you. I be watching you, girl. But then going on, you made a point of who, who's the play-play friends and, and, and spilling the tea uh, uh, and, and sister girl or girlhood. And I'm like, girl, Candy, when are you going to speak your truth? You know you don't like them Scott sisters, but you you know you say this and that, and you know you really don't like Kenya, cause she's definitely done sprayed you in the face a couple of times, and we know you hold grudges. So I'm just trying to figure it all out, and we know you don't like Nene, but you love to go get the tea so you could take it back to your two allies, which is Cynthia and Kenya, and then y'all try to warp up a plan. You even tried to warp up a plan when y'all was in Toronto, Canada, trying to get the snake game to fit uh Yovana uh Yovana on the show remember that how y'all co-conspired but you said y'all were friends <laughs> which you didn't want to hook Yovana in that little uh piece that was going on I was like girl when you want to have a come down you try to get a come down but you try to not put your hands in it I mean you're gonna throw a rock but you're gonna hide them hands similar to your other protege which is Kenya Moore how she loves to throw everybody under the bus okay if she can definitely do it she will do it and y'all take it like y'all some little zombies running around now so Candy, yes we want you to speak your truth we don't want you to continue to be a bone collector when you see your kind of partners that you call friends uh which is kenya and cynthia we're gonna throw eva in there for the time being because you don't shade the shit out of her as well okay about her having amnesia and this that and the third but 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 you and you also said something about y'all be smiling they well you said they everything was they 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 not you you ain't including yourself in the situation but you know damn well your name need to be up there too meaning we 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 not they 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 but we 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 is what you should be saying but yes honey um you want to spit the truth out on them but you don't want to carry the truth on sisterhood because you know you're not sisters with those women so that's what you need to do just say you ain't sister with nobody on this show you came over here and get your money let's get into it let's get the people what they want which is drama that's how you should come off but you being fake fraudulent and, and full of fuckery and um just acting shitty around now trying to say okay yeah bone collector you take it to the next person okay what you got okay yeah then you take it to the next person that's how you go can i'm like do you really want to be seen like this on tv i know you're getting a, a good nice bank but the storyline is kind of getting weak we don't want to see you being a bone collector we don't want to see you not expressing some needs or some drama on your own self uh, in the midst of your own family but you got to come for these other ladies okay about stuff so that's what I am getting tired of, and I must speak my truth, okay? But anyway, then Candy, um, you made a statement about um, you was glad to see Nene and 
uh, Cynthia makeup. But the expression on your face when you were saying that said the opposite. You were like, I want to continue to see them fight. I don't want them to be happy. Okay, that's what your uh, facial expression and your body language was giving me. No, you didn't want to see them happy because, again, you see them having a fake, unrealistic type of friendship because they always fussing. They always sitting there uh, tearing each other down every chance they get. You know, Nene is the one that wants to speak her mind and then when somebody else want to tear her down and say what she's being fake about, then she wants to go in hiding and then she wants to cry and say everybody doing this, that, and the third. But, again, I can't give you that. No, none of y'all are friends, but I've said that before because ain't no way in the world you're going to come on a television show and tell your friend down, such as how y'all go around and tell each other down on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So that is one thing I can't get with you, but I need you to put yourself in those same scenarios and start up instead of talking about they. No, Candy, you need to be in there too. It need to be a we situation, not a they situation. Then you go to Nene's luncheon. You admit you were shady towards the ladies with Nene. And they really didn't think and you really didn't think they were her true friends because you already said you've been around Nene long enough. You don't take with her a lot of times and you see who she really is paired up with when you're talking about friends. You mentioned some lady named Diane um, and some other lady, but other i don't know i'm i'm kind of agreeing with you too where do the extras come from because they varied in age groups you know what i'm saying I'm like damn some of them look like they need to be up in the grave somewhere but you know hey money comes in many different forms and shapes and sizes so it is what it is they probably say the same shit about me maybe i need to be under the graveyard too or how i look don't matter because i'm self-assured into how i look how i present myself and I just love myself, okay? All right, I know I need to lose a little weight here and there, but hey, I'm working on it, people. I'm working on it, but if you want to charge that against me, go ahead, because it's true. I am overweight, but I still love myself some Dale Chanel. I sure do. I treat Dale Chanel right, but Dale Chanel, they be tired. I be tired. I don't like exercising, y'all. I ain't going to lie. So, I have to work on my eating attitude first. Because it's a mental thing. You can do whatever you want to set out there to do. Don't get it twisted. But it's just sometimes. <laughs> you be like, my body don't want to cooperate. Okay. But anyway, that was just my sidebar on myself. See, I can check myself when I get ready. I can check myself. But anyway, um, yeah. Candy was all on this luncheon. And she was talking about the women that Nene was hanging around. That, um. I watched somebody's um, channel that was doing shit. I can't remember. I watched so many. But uh, I think it was Ashley. Ashley, she has her own channel. I don't call. What Ashley's channel name, Shasta? Uh, I'm not Ashley Miller. I think it's, her name is Ashley Miller. She was doing a, uh, <laughs> a video on last night episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she was like, where do these ladies come with their extras? <laughs> It seemed like she did just pull them off the street at random. You know what I'm saying? Like, you look good. Come on over here. You look good. You come over here. I'm like, girl, she need to take a picture of her latest of success. Because we need to do a double take. We need to say, they need to go pull some people off the street. To call themselves lady of success because they sure wasn't dressed like i mean I, maybe it's just me but i'm thinking you know if you got it like that you in uh what do you call that uh, uh leisure type wear you just look like money you know what i'm saying makeup flawless rings jewelry on point Woo, name brand club you know what i'm just saying you know then you could be very successful very well off and be looking like a little uh broke Papa out there but be having bank you know what i'm saying like oh i'm gonna go buy a house well how you gonna pay for it what mortgage company you use oh i'm paying cash <laughs> what you got two hundred three hundred thousand dollars like that yes let me get my checkbook okay bam and that's what i'm talking about or you can go out there and buy a maserati whatever the cost is up two hundred thousand dollars for a car sure i got it uh-huh you want to give me a discount because i'm finna pay you cash for it okay and see that's what i'm talking about rolling assets out the wazooka okay but anyway i just thought that was cute and i did recognize that but you know candy would know more so than myself or how nene gets down with certain people she hang around okay so uh i had to lean on to her understanding that no she didn't really believe these ladies were nene friends uh and that nene basically um 
surround herself with a bunch of nobodies or people she want to be somebody's but she seems like she hold the whistle over them and tell them which way to go how they need to go and this that and third that's what i got up got out of it it seemed like candy and i shared the same opinion but we could be wrong we could be wrong but anyway then candy made a point to say she didn't know Nene had any real friends. So I'm like, damn, Candy, you hitting below the belt now. You at the kneecaps. Okay, Kenya goes all the way down to the feet when she want to get somebody. Okay, but you at the kneecaps now, or, or pretty much the ankles. Okay, how you going to fix your mouth to say you didn't think Nene had friends? Hell, I'm trying to think, do you have any? Okay, I'm trying to think the same thing about you, Candy. Do you say Rashida, your friend, and Tori, you right? But I don't know, girl. It's solidified. Is it solidified? Because also you running with them. <laughs> okay, girl. But if you say so, if you say Nene ain't got no friends, okay, we could say the same about you too. So if Nene want to hang out with her so called ladies of success friends, then go let her. But I know you be over there with Tiny half the time. And, and Tiny probably be telling you how to act on this show. Because it don't seem like you have too much of. Uh, uh, appetite of showing us who you really are okay i'm just saying candy but then candy um she started doing free promotion on tags telling us where tags is gonna be located in the future this that and the third is moving over there to the old lady gang on p street she got it you know because a lot of people thought when she first came out she was up there buying those buildings that's a i, I can't at least in them buildings because you got to have a hell of a lot of money and you got prime real estate too can and may or may not have the money. I ain't going to say which one or the other. But I couldn't see her dropping all her money in OLG. And it hadn't been prosperous more than 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Because restaurant businesses, uh, depending if you buy the land and you construct a building on it. Or if you even really lease it. The prox, the what do you call it? The idea of it lasting beyond three to five years are for the negative. They don't think. You know, your business will be successful in the restaurant business and the club and business as well. But if you've done 10 plus years, you're doing real good. So whatever you're doing, keep it up and, and stay uh, above the trending things that are coming out so you can stay afloat. But, uh, yeah, I knew she was leasing those buildings. So it just is what it is. When a lease is up, you're not satisfied or you want to do something else, you go search for other leasing opportunities. And evidently one came up or one was in the making of coming up. And then that's where she decided to move it. I'm like, okay, whatever floats your boat, Candy, okay? Whatever floats your boat. But, yeah, she was giving free promotion to herself about tax was moving. Um... Then we had a scene where Candy was shading Nene and Kenya about dressing in solid colors. They did not, uh, well, Nene personally, since she invited everybody to her leopard print or print, animal print type of uh, ensemble you had to wear for the event she was having for her luncheon. Uh, Nene and uh, Kenya came in all solid colors. Nene was in all black and Kenya was in all white. I'm saying, is that duality? Are y'all trying to tell us y'all with the elite girl? What is going on? Are they trying to stay there with the Illuminati? I'm, I'm just saying yin and yang, black and white, duality. I don't understand. Trying to uh, make chaos, that is. But for those who know what I'm talking about, you know, you know what I'm going with it. Okay, but if others don't, just do your research on the whole thing of um what do you call it uh to be delicate with it <sighs> soul sacrificing okay just a cent the whole thing the illuminati just do your research okay and then you can come in your understanding is it brainwashing techniques or is it just a world full of sheep i don't know uh but anyway going from that situation yeah she gets on them both about coming in solid colors and then they just having accessories that have animal print on it and she was like no that is not acceptable that's not acceptable i came in here with my uh duality colors my yin and yang my animal print and i went by the book i i did what i was supposed to, have to do 
by what your um, invitation stated. Now, why aren't y'all not in it? I'm like, can't just because you want to be strictly by the book when somebody tell you this is what they want. Look who you're dealing with. Look who are you dealing with. Nene don't never do nothing she's supposed to be doing. She damn sure don't be on time even for her event. Because unless y'all just had to be there to get y'all money for as taping purposes, we know why you and Tanya stayed. Okay, maybe Kenya didn't have to be in this situation of a scene. Okay, so she could have just bounced out. It was just optional for her. Okay, since y'all have said what I hear in the streets, y'all get paid per episode and a length of time in that episode. So. Kenya probably was doing what she needed to do. She showed. She spent whatever. Got herself on camera and she left. And if it was something she needed to be there for to get paid. You could best assure she probably would have been there fussing with y'all about where the hell Nene yet. Who has a luncheon and they two and a half hours late. Who do that? You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure after an hour of waiting. Or when Nene got there. Hell you could have left. You should say baby. I, I, no, we waited for you two and a half hours. I am t- I don't have my dinner. I don't have my drinks. And now I'm for the bounce. But thank you baby for uh showing up late for your event. And having us wait here like idiots. But we gone. Or I'm gone. Okay. And that's how we would have played that. You didn't have to play nice candy. Not in that situation. Not on that platform. You didn't have to. But then maybe you were uh, technically supposed to be there for how ever long because you wanted to get paid that would be the only way i would see you staying there okay but that's just me my thoughts moving on to the next thing you said candy candy says kenya and nini are very alike uh than different um that she said they probably want to sew her up kill her or, or whatever to make that uh for making that statement about them but she told it pretty much true yeah they both like to be seen they like to be heard they're very loud individuals it's like screaming when they come in the room look at me look at me i'm the shit i'm the shit so that's just how it is maybe candy that's what you're striving or striving to be okay i don't know all right but it just is what it is candy goes on also to say um she didn't get Kenya's side of the story of what happened in the restaurant with the cookie lady and Tanya and this, that, and the third. Again, you ain't finna tell me nobody called you and told you anything about that scenario. So that's just foolery, fakery, fuckery, fraudulent shit of thinking that you're trying to give over here on us, Candy. The ones that know. And my family, they good about sensing bullshit and smelling bullshit and they call out bullshit, okay? So pretty much we're gonna say you can keep that lie that you told because if y'all could sit there and have uh in toronto y'all had that big old bash out fight screaming match y'all had with um yovana telling uh portia that her man is the snake (laughs) and all that drama and you and marlo and um i don't know it might have been portia I, i forget but i know was it nene I don't think it was Nene because Nene ended up sh- uh, showing up at her doorstep the next morning. But I think it was you, Marlo, and maybe it was Portia had called Tanya and said what was going on, how it happened. And, you know, ooh, it was just a hot mess and y'all wish she was there to catch the tea. Okay, but y'all was calling her, telling her, so y'all, you want to make us believe that uh, nobody from that shop, not Kenya, not Cynthia, not Tanya herself, called and told you what went down with the cookie lady. Uh-uh, I don't believe it. Y'all, you, you sure ain't got no friends up there, so I don't know why you being a bone collector for them if you can't get the tea. Okay, moving on from that situation. Candy got mad at us. And I put myself in us because I am a blogger. I am a YouTube YouTube content creator. Don't know if she watched my video or not. Don't really care. Okay. But anyway, everybody was talking about her. But she mad at us because she felt that um, we always say she has Kenya back. And I'm like, well, damn, Candy, that is a true statement. We never saw you stand up. And meant when you were trying to assert yourself to Kenya, you didn't do it right. You know what I'm saying? Kenya shut all y'all asses down and be ready to walk away after she do it okay but y'all be tiptoeing and 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 saying it real lightly for her to have some comeback or be stupid about it and y'all accept it or you accept it can you remember that thing let's go around here and tell you why we feel or why i feel yes you are up uh 
Kenya's behind. Yes, you are scared of Kenya. And yes, you do have Kenya back when you know she's being rude and frankly nasty. Okay. Do you remember the time uh, when I just explained to you about Kenya saying she had a, a, a epiphany or uh, intuition, a premonition that uh, Cynthia was going to get proposed to by Mike? But then before that situation even came up, you had already told us on camera that you called um, Kenya prior to her getting there saying you need to hurry up because you think Mike is going to propose. OK, so that was a way of you taking up for Kenya instead of you walking away like you did out there when you told your husband about what was going on. And he was kind of questioning why would Kenya do that? Hell, I would have stayed out there with my husband or hell, I would have left. I would have cussed her ass out and left and we wouldn't have been seeing fish. Filming together for a while. I would have filmed with everybody else. We would probably been in the same scenario or environment, but I would have paid her dust. Like she do everybody, meaning Kenya. When she get mad at them, she pay them dust. Like she don't even see them. Okay, they just like Casper the friendly ghost. They're not there. That's what I would have been doing to Kenya. So Kenya could straighten up a lot right. But you didn't check her, Kenya. We go to the situation where we back in that snake gate situation. It's active and it's full of effect. Y'all in Toronto. When you portion her. Portia's playing a uh, bad cop. Kenya trying to play good cop. And you over there laughing like a hyena. Okay. Trying to uh, uh, get the situation under control. So y'all can uh, get Yvonne to confess something that she didn't even do. You and you talking about. Yeah it seemed like she about to crash. She want to tell us something. Yeah. But you. You. You was all into that foolishness. And you were supporting Kenya's bad habits. Okay. Bad habits. So yes. Again. You take up for Kenya. Uh, or you have Kenya's back. You remember the situation. When um, Kenya had a lunch date with Nene. When Nene was initially trying to. Um, well no. It was when you had the lunch date with Nene. And Nene was telling you. That uh, she has evidence. Recorded audio. That somebody has on Cynthia. Talking about her. In a nasty way. And you remember that lunch. And y'all went to. And you discussed it. Then you went and took that information. And brought it back to Cynthia. And Kenya. Do you remember that girl? I, I hope you do. Okay. I hope you do remember that. Because again. You was taken up for Kenya. Kenya as well as um, Cynthia by bringing the information for pretty much Kenya to tell Cynthia how to act on that situation. Okay. And then they kind of talked bad and you was in a situation with them dog and Nene as well. Okay. Uh, do you remember the situation when you had Kenya's back? Uh, when they were going to be throwing blows, you know, out the... Yvonne had told Portia, uh, your man is a snake. And, you know, our hell broke loose and shit. And, and who who were you taking up for, girl? Because you were trying to badger uh, Yvonne on the side. They kind of caught some recording where you were trying to say, you need to go on and tell who said what. Was it Nene, this, that, and third? You, I mean, you were still doing some fuckery shit behind the scenes. But the camera was catching shit, too. But, again, you took up. For Kenya. And you went and walked out with Kenya. And um. What's baby girl name? Eva. When it was time to go. So again. You were supporting Kenya. You was having her back. Um. Another instance was. You didn't check. Wait a minute. Okay. And we're going to bring it full forward for you. The event that Nene was having at that restaurant for our sisterhood. She invited y'all to her animal print party. Kenya came in. Kenya spoke to the, I don't know, the whole room, which is wasn't nobody there but you and Tanya. But she sashayed her ass up in there, gave you a hug and kiss and asked you how you were doing and where everybody at did not acknowledge Tanya not one time. And Tanya sitting up there looking stupid. And you ain't saying, Kenya, if you don't sit your ass down and you don't recognize this woman over here. Tanya, you're not going to treat her wrong in front of me. Because I got a problem with that. Now, you address her calmly, nicely. You know, let her know 
she know you know she there because that's the common courtesy thing to do and if she didn't want to do it you could have said well get the hell out of the way from me okay because I'm, I'm having a nice time with tanya okay we already had that foolishness that y'all did to her bringing in the cookie lady and all that kind of stuff and the cookie lady got a felon around now going in jail but you know that's some sidebar information i gotta do a story on that the cookie lady y'all got a little criminal past i gotta bring that out to y'all family yes we do but like i said Again, taking up for Kenya. You, you, you're so fake and fraudulent when it comes to this shit, Ken. It's just like, what part do you not understand? Do somebody need to record you and let you know they're recording you so you can listen to this shit? Uh, play back so you can hear what you don't say, what you should be saying, but it's left to give people the assumption that yes, you do. You like Cynthia, you stuck up Kenya's ass. Okay, I'm just saying, you take up for it, period and point blank. Then, when Kenya get there, she only stays seven minutes because they showed us the duration on camera. She only stays seven minutes, and then you ain't really say now. You ain't really check her and say, girl, if you don't sit your ass down. Or why did you come? You know, just give her a real run for her money on her actions. Because if she was going to do that, uh, why did you even come? You shouldn't have came. You shouldn't have got all pretty, drove down there just to sit in the seat for seven minutes. Tell me, I'm gone. Girl, I would have got all in her ass. Because she wasn't about no sisterhood and neither were you. But anyway, it just is what it is. And then you go and try to shame Marlo. Uh, about not being truthful about a conversation she had with Portia prior to them coming to the uh, animal print party. Now, we all saw that Portia and um, Marla were having a conversation over the phone. She was trying to uh, tell Portia to, you know, don't be so mean and, and horrible. Come on back. You know, come on. You know, she invited you. Come on and break an olive branch with her. Come on now. Come on, girl. She pretty much begging her. But uh, Portia was steadfast, like, no, I'm not coming. But then you're going to sit slick shade the whole situation saying, well, I, I talked to Shamil, but Shamil was telling me she was coming. Now, hell, Shamil could have got a, a invitation just from Nene. Hell, if Nene invite the, some women we don't even know that she called is her group that she hang out with all the time, w could it not be possible that she invited Shamil also? She didn't have to be a plus one for Portia, but you connected the two that they were coming together. Now, see, that's your own mind forming things up there and giving you uh, a process and you a train of thought. That wasn't even true. Marlo didn't lie, but you took it that Marlo was lying. Okay, at least that's what I got from it. When she wasn't, Portia did tell her she wasn't coming. But isn't that the same scenario, if I must bring it up, about Cynthia's Sigrun party, where Kenya had said she wasn't coming, this, that, and the third, but you were in cahoots with her and trying to get her to come, and this, that, and the third, same as what Marlo was doing. But it was an open conversation. You were behind closed doors, and it was fake and fraudulent and fictitious, okay? Fictitious. I don't got another F word. We might have five, y'all, honey. You were fictitious, fake, foolery, fuckery, fraudulent in this situation. Ooh, that's a mouthful, y'all. That's a mouthful. But anyway, we're going to roll with that one. Okay, fictitious. All right, now. But, uh, yeah, you sit up there and going to sit up there and call a spade a spade. But then you, you, you did the same shit at Cynthia's signal party by bringing Kenya up in there. Okay, for Nene to pounce on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll get her digs on. But you, you knew about that. That's what I'm talking about, Ken. You full of shit. You are just full of shit. But anyway, going on. Then you're going to try to shade Nene. Talking about uh, Nene was trying to be humble. Why is she trying to be humble? You know? And I'm like, damn it. You just said she was humble. But then you on the same breath, you're going to say... But she need to put her ego aside. Or she put her ego aside for this uh this luncheon and this olive branch that she's trying to throw out with everybody. But everybody don't want uh to mend fences, Nene. That's pretty much what Candy was saying. You wasting your time. Because everybody saw through your fake and fraudulent type of situation about wanting to make amends, wanting to get this sisterhood thing together when it's not a sisterhood. I'm like, damn Candy, is it more so you don't want uh, Nene to me and fences because you like the chaotic situations that are going on now that nobody's really embracing Nene but as we go and get closer towards the end of season 12 it's showing a different picture Nene making up with everybody except for her nemesis Kenya and she already said that from the beginning she don't give a fuck about Kenya 
It is what it is. They're going to be enemies to the day. I guess the Real Housewives of Atlanta go off. <laughs> or they replace everybody on the show. Because they need a new cast. So that is what it is. But, oh, excuse me. To me, it sounds like you don't want no harmony. You don't want no peace up in the camp. Because you don't deem everybody as fake and fraudulent. There is no sisterhood. Okay? But you ain't including yourself in that. you saying they. But you should say we. We are a bunch of uh, non-existent friends in this Real Housewives of Atlanta. We just act this way. We tape this way. But we don't see it for each other. We don't see it for each other. Now, see, I could have respected that. But you're going to say, oh, Shamia. Portia would come because Shamia was going to come. I mean, girl, you too through. You too through. You said you weren't feeling the sisterhood. You weren't feeling the luncheon. You just didn't feel anything. And then you bring up Portia feelings about the other girl. Saying, Portia don't really want to be there. She ain't really want to make up with Nene. She hold grudges. I'm like, no, nah, Candy, you hold grudges, baby girl. You the one hold grudges. All right, remember the skate? You ain't got over them claw. Oh, man, I'm finna say the claw sisters. The Scott sisters. You ain't forgot them. You ain't really forgave Portia for uh, being in cahoots with Phaedra and trying to act dumb about it. Because if you had your way, you would have had uh, her off the show along with Phaedra. But you didn't have enough evidence and the dumbness played good for Portia okay Portia just got over her head you remember she remember that it was a railroad down there that was still in operations you know, for the slaves to go <laughs> and partake of and go to another freedom town you know what I'm saying so we had to give Portia that she wasn't in her right mind so that's the only thing praise the Lord that saved Portia with a job still okay but other than that they couldn't pin it on Portia she was going on what somebody told her and she was the intended target you see what i'm saying so no they couldn't rustle no feathers with portia but it taught her a lot but yeah we know reason why she can't come back and you know it's gonna have to be you <laughs> or her and right now i guess they don't want to seek litigation or they don't want litigation that you would bring towards them so it just is what it is but candy candy girl candy girl just know Hey, when you play dirty, it comes back dirty. Karma is a female and she's a bitch. All right. But anyway, uh, let's see. What else I got on Miss Candy? All right. Oh, and Candace talking about she kind of feels sorry for Nene, which we know she don't because all the women are not really embracing her or not taking her serious and that they make up with each other quicker than they make up with Nene and this, that, and the third. I was like, oh, okay, Ken, all right, whatever you say. And she was like, uh, <sighs> You don't understand why Nene keep putting herself out there, uh, especially when Portia and Cynthia had blocked her and this, that, and the third. And I said, storyline, girl. Shoot, Nene should be very clear about blocking folk because she blocked all of y'all on season 11, did she not? <laughs> and when she wanted to unblock y'all when it was time for the new season to start, she unblocked y'all. So that's just a play on things to keep us uh, looking at the storyline a little bit longer. But all of y'all are getting to be weak, tired, and boom with y'all storyline. So y'all need to pick it up. Pick up the pace, all right? <sighs> but you believe the sisterhood that Nene speak of is totally fake. Uh, you said they fall out every day like clockwork. Are you a part of that fallout, Candy? I think you were at one time. That's why Nene picked you as a scapegoat to come in and told her messages back to the other girls. Okay, you feel for that one hook, line, and sinker. Then you express that Nene falls out with all her close friends in the past and you go trying to name them and stuff and i'm like isn't that the same we could say about you and the scott sisters and tamar braxton remember you fell out with her and then you found a newfound friendship with her on celebrity uh uh what was it celebrity big brother house you remember you was over there doing that thing then you call yourself falling out with portia williams then y'all trying to make amends in season 12 with one another and 11 but you still pick at her from time to time when it comes to about dennis not being faithful so girl to me you are one of the famous fakest persons on the show candy 
All right, you talk about fake sisterhood. Well, you're a part of that sisterhood, so include yourself in the fake drama that's going on on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. You talk about you a Taurus. Don't bring zodiac signs up in here, cause we know some good Tauruses that speak their mind when they need to, that shut people down when they need to verbally. Okay, verbally. My mom is a Taurus, and she don't cut the chaser for nobody. She give it to you straight, honey, and be ready about them hands okay did i tell you i got slapped by when i was 18 years old saying something think she heard it girl please okay and um and then you can't move past things you hold grudges you just hold you want them hold on to your die type person you're gonna take that grudge to the grave and i say that because i'm still speaking on the uh, scott sisters when it comes to escape you didn't want to form a friendship with them after something had went down in the past you made them girls or one of the sisters come on broad television and radio saying that they lied on you when probably they didn't lie they probably just wanted to go on and, and get their career started back and they knew you could be a good avenue for that to happen so it's almost like you forced that apology to come out and then you still didn't want to do nothing with him. You're talking about, I don't want to do any uh, comeback album. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to go into Broadway and do this, that, and the third. That was my dream of acting. And then we see how that went. Uh, that just lasted for a couple of months. And then you were back on Real Housewives of Atlanta like it wasn't nothing. Okay. So I, I don't know, Ken. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. But if you keep coming with it, I'll keep reviewing you, honey. And see will you ever come to the truth that you just this fake and fraud and don't have a sisterhood with these women just like you're trying to say is they when you need to include we in the scenario but that's all i had family about this particular speak on it that candy gave us for um february 17th her rendition of what happened on the Real Housewives of Atlanta episode that aired on the 16th. Please get down in them comments. Tell me what y'all thought about subject matter. And put your uh, two cents in in the interaction <laughs> column section. You know I love to read them. And you know I do read them. Okay. And y'all take it easy. I will see y'all next video. Love y'all to the core. And definitely share and like my videos. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Alright guys. Good night.